Hello, I'm still called Dave. And insert Jacob's intro here. Yeah, Intel's 8th gen Coffee Lake processors have now launched, delivering their first mainstream six core CPUs into the market and a necessary repost to AMD's Ryzen chips. We've checked out the individual processors on their own, but now we've got a chance to see what the PC builders are making out of Intel's brand new platform, with a pair of PCs from CyberPower Systems and Scan Computers, respectively. Intel's new chips are surprisingly hard to come by on their own right now, and that's because the launch was brought forward from the start of 2018 to right now, and unfortunately full stock hasn't reached the channel yet. Some retailers only got a handful of chips at launch, and they're only starting to trickle back in, and sometimes with an incredibly high markup due to their scarcity. So a pre-built PC could be your best bet of getting Coffee Lake onto your desktop this side of the new year, as the system integrators are more likely to prioritise full system customers over upgraders. Uh, due to the lack of backwards compatibility, you're going to have to get a new motherboard anyway, so why not just start afresh? So the first build we've got is this £999 rig from CyberPower, the Infinity X88 GTX Elite. They've gone for the classic Core i5 GTX 1060 combination, which delivers a great mix of gaming performance, multi-thread speed and overclocking potential, but this time around with Coffee Lake's extra cores. Yeah, CyberPower have also picked one of the cheapest Z370 boards around, which is the £120 MSI Z370A Pro. It's a very capable motherboard, but you're not going to get the level of connectivity that you're going to get out of a slightly more pricier option. That said, you should still be able to get some decent overclocking performance out of both it and the 8600K, though you'll struggle to nail a consistent 5GHz with this lower spec board. So, what's CyberPower managed? Well, this isn't one of their overclocked SKUs, so there hasn't been any clock tweaking on their side, but the 120mm Cooler Master Liquid Chiller should let you get to around 4.5GHz without too much effort. And inside, we've also got an Ickle 120GB SSD, but with a 1TB hard drive in there as a data backup. Unfortunately, that's going to make game management a bit of a nightmare, especially with titles like Shadow of War taking up 100GB on their own. On the memory side, CyberPower Rig is also sporting a healthy 8GB of system memory. But they've also committed the cardinal sin of system builders. They've only chosen one stick of memory. And that, I know why they've done that, is to keep costs down, but unfortunately that immediately halves your memory bandwidth. Bad cyberpower. Bad cyberpower. On the other side, we've got Scan, who've built some more expensive £1,650 3XS gamer machine. But despite the higher price tag, it's a lean gaming build with zero fat. They've opted to use a straight core i7-8700 without the K suffix. That means the, multi uh, the multipliers are all locked down, so there's no easy overclocking to be had. But that does mean you get the full 6-core 12-thread Monty without the K-series price tag or the need for an expensive motherboard or expensive cooling. The ASUS Prime Z370P motherboard they've used is another price-conscious board, and the Arctic Freezer Chip Chiller is more than capable of dealing with its unoverclocked CPU. Being a little more parsimonious about the rest of the components also means you get all that with a shiny GTX 1080 graphics card to make your monitor smile. This overclocked EVGA card takes up around 30% of your build price, which is about right for a gaming rig. 3XS has also got a larger SSD inside it too. It's still a 2.5-inch SATA drive and not a pricey NVMe one, but the difference to actual game load times is going to be relatively minimal. And that 250GB capacity is probably the minimum acceptable size for a boot drive. There's a little over 200GB of space to drop off your most off-played games into, but there's also 2TB of extra storage for the rest of your Steam library or completely legitimate media content. Oh! So obviously the more expensive scan machine outperforms the CyberPower rig, but they are operating at two very different tiers of PC gaming. So £1,000 is probably about where the prices start for proper gaming performance, and not just the ones designed for Dota or Overwatch. The £1,500 to £1,700 mark is where things get serious, then you're starting to get into the high end of gaming. And the difference in game performance between the two machines is quite obvious, especially when you start to move beyond the 1080p standard. In GTA 5, the Core i5 GTX 1060 combo of the CyberPower machine will net you a happy 59 FPS, almost nailing that 60 FPS level. With the Core i7 GTX 1080 scan PC, however, that leads up to 99 FPS. With the scan machine, the graphically intensive Shadow of War with its shiny high-res texture pack also delivers almost twice the frame rate of the CyberPower rig. That gets 39 FPS on average, while Scan's 3XS Gamer delivers 75 frames per second. The extra frame buffer of the GTX 1080 and higher memory bandwidth of the Scan machine comes into play here. While the average frame rates aren't too catastrophically different, the minimum FPS is. The Scan PC hits 34 FPS at worst, while the CyberPower PC drops to 5 frames per second as a minimum. In the DirectX 12 world of Hitman, the 3XS Gamer tops 110 FPS, while the CyberPower rig trails at 64. But while the difference between these two machines is quite obvious, that's not to say the cheaper CyberPower rig isn't still capable of some great gaming performance. It handles 1080p with ease at some of the highest system settings available, and even delivers decent 1440p performance too. 
With GTA 5 and Hitman benchmarks able to deliver the 60 FPS standard of 1440p with some of the highest settings available, you're not going to be too disappointed. Still, there are some concerns with this rig going forward. At such a high resolution, that 6GB of frame buffer and the single channel memory system is going to be an issue for the CyberPower rig creating more of a bottleneck. You can see that happening in some of the uh, more system intensive titles delivering ultra low minimum frame rates at the moment. You are though getting almost twice the 1440p performance by spending that little bit more on the scan machine with a GTX 1080 humming away inside it. But if you're looking for a 4K gaming PC, you're gonna have to start tweaking around the system configurers and get yourself a GTX 1080 Ti. <laughs> The classic Core i5 GTX 1060 combination is going to be one we see in an awful lot of £1,000 gaming rigs going forward. It offers a stellar match of speedy single threaded throughput and graphical grunt that will absolutely nail 1080p gaming at the very highest settings. At 4040p though, the CyberPower machine does end up with a memory bottleneck down to the fact it's only using a single channel memory. We understand them trying to hit a certain price point, but having the available memory bandwidth is just too great a cut to make. And that 120 gigabyte SSD is also a little bit too small to be of any real use right now, making its place in the side power rig just a bit questionable. It's a nicely designed and built PC though. The white LEDs light up on the inside in a non-obtrusive way and makes the see-through front panel look a lot classier when it's powered down. What isn't unobtrusive, however, is the fan on the Cooler Master Liquid Chiller. It's got a tonal whine that while it isn't loud, is pitched at a level that will really drill into your brain, as Jacob will demonstrate now. That's a horrible noise. So the Scan 3XS rig is a really interesting setup. The K-Series i7 would have increased the price considerably without delivering too much in terms of gaming performance. So the Core i7-8700 that they've opted for, however, still has 12 threads to offer multi-threaded speeds as well as the goods in-game. They've also chosen to spend some 30% of the build budget on the excellent GTX 1080, and that's what gives the 3XS gamer that impressive gaming performance it offers. There's also an excellent balance to the rest of the components too. The well-priced Zeus Z370 board more than makes up for the fact there are no H-series motherboards around at the moment, and that 250GB SSD is just enough to give your favourite games a boost. The chassis is solid, and the PSU is branded and more than capable of coping with system demands, and they've given us proper dual-channel memory to boot. In short, it's a quality gaming PC that doesn't waste your precious cash on extraneous luxuries like RGB, but you've still got to spend the big bucks for a machine this powerful. So, that's our first taste of pre-built Coffee Lake PCs, with two very different builds. One very successful, and the other, well, a little more frustrating. Yeah, single channel memory, why? But if you like what you've seen, give us the old YouTube love, and check back for more great gaming and hardware coverage here and on the website. Oh, thanks for watching.